The Wynda B. Melly trial continues. The judge John Murphy denied the motion for a mistrial, and then a juror had to go to the ER over the weekend, so it was delayed a bunch today. But then court resumes and the chess match between the prosecution and the defense began. A few experts that work for T-Mobile and all the phone records came in, and Melly's team has been trying to avoid these phone records to come in court for years, like since I, I think literally like 2020. But it's finally here and the cross-examinations are pretty funny, so let's get right into it. If you're new to my channel, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram right here. What just happened here at this exchange with the pen? What, do they not want me to use pens anymore or something? Emergency room on Friday. Uh, she thinks she had food poisoning is what I'm told. And um, she's back in the ER now uh, as we speak. Two in addition to her? Yes. Okay. Two more jurors missing? Just three total? He seems so happy for the situation he's in. Like, I don't understand. Like, this man is cheesing everywhere. You're in a trial fighting for your damn life and you giggling like this in between breaks. I think the defense is happy that the motion was denied. I mean, overall, it's definitely swaying towards the defense and they've looked pretty good so far compared to the prosecution that's looked pretty sloppy. The defense in closing argument has incredible fodder and ammunition, no pun intended, to go after the integrity of this prosecution. It is absolutely painful for me to watch this direct examination of Ms. Holmes, it's painful. The the Felicia Holmes direct examination was terrible. That did not benefit the prosecution whatsoever. Going forward, it was a bad prosecutorial move. Less point, Anjanette. When I was the county prosecutor, if one of my assistant prosecutors circumvented a ruling like that, they would not have a job. Just more context to show you that the prosecutor really made a big mistake here. When we broke this morning, one of our jurors, Gary, was escorting the jurors out. Uh, he was approached. Uh, and uh, one of the jurors had asked him a question. Gary, go ahead and tell us exactly what was said. Right. She, uh, she more or less says, asked me if she could ask me a question. I said, well, it depends. So the question was, she said, well, what's the status of the mistrial? You need to have her name on the record and find out how she was having any knowledge of that because that was never stated in front of them. I think it was. Wait, the, the prosecutor's wrong. A juror asked, what's the status of the mistrial? Because in front of them, both lawyers asked for a mistrial right in front of them. Of course they're aware that there's a mistrial that could happen. Your Honor, so far, did she say anything in the media or covered with that? The prosecutor's explaining that she wants to make sure this jury isn't looking at the media because they're obviously not supposed to do that at all. Did the defense attorney say that don't have to say mistrial? Okay. So that's where you heard from? Yes. Yeah. Anything other than that? No. Uh, was there any other uh, research that you may have done or looked at newspapers or any kind of article about the motion for mistrial, anything like that? Yeah. So it looks like the lady from the ER has arrived and they're starting now. So this lady has worked for T-Mobile for 26 years. So we're about to get into the phone records, which is probably the biggest piece of evidence that the prosecution has against Melly. That means that we respond to subpoenas and other legal demands from various agencies across the United States. Call detail records. Do you keep information regarding the network? Yes. Do you keep information regarding subscribers? Yes. So call detail reports will show incoming and outgoing phone calls or text messages made or received by the cellular telephone. So what happens is the phone reaches out to the tower with the strongest signal, which is not necessarily the closest tower. So for example, we can have a tower on top of the building or we can have one down the street. However, the one down the street might be the stronger signal and would pick up that call. At that point, it's transferred to our switch and our switch is what records all the information that you will see on the call detail records. I didn't know that calls go to the strongest tower, not the closest one. That's an interesting fact right there. We'll show where the phone is connected to when it's not in use, as long as it's turned on. Is it in the regular practice to keep such records? Yes. Here at this time, the state would offer a state's triple O, a state 63. State objection? Yes, judge. Objection. She just submitted that evidence of the phone records and Melly's team is going to object to it, obviously, because for months on end, they've been trying to get this evidence not to go in court. So they don't want this phone evidence in court. Melly's team does not want this. Relevance? Sure. Relevance is the objection. Objection overruled, it will be admitted. What's the next number? 63. Overruled. Objection overruled. It will be admitted. The technology that you... Melly's lawyer is going to try to shit on the technology. Um, for identifying location. How, how is that verified by T-Mobile itself? That you would have to ask an engineer for. So you don't know how that's done? How it's verified? Yeah. As to what tower connected to? Is that what you're asking? Yes. So it's done with a radio frequency, is how the towers work. It's a signal. Okay. So but you were telling us earlier that the phone does not necessarily connect to the nearest tower. Correct. It connects to the tower with the strongest signal. Correct. How, how do you know how far the phone is from the actual tower? I don't. Is there no way to tell that? No. Not through me. Not through you? Correct. And how do you know 
if the tower that the phone connected to is the closest tower or the one with the stronger signal? That would not be a question for me. You would have to ask an engineer. He's putting the question out there. How do you know how close the person was to this tower? You really can't even say. How would you know at what point the signal disparity is strong enough, strong enough for it to default to the one that's further away as opposed to the one that's closer? Again, that's a question from the engineer, not from me. So you have no way of helping us understand any of this information that you just described? Correct. Um, you just collect it when you're subpoenaed and you provide? Correct. And you're not familiar with the technology of not the questions that you're asking, correct? It's not used for identifying the locations of customers' phones beyond the purpose of just billing. Correct. Okay. He's hesitating. He hesitated a little bit then. He wanted to ask one more question. I couldn't think of what it was. With regards to these records, are they accurate? Objection. Yes. What's the objection? Like a foundation, Chief. Why don't you he said, are they accurate? And he said, objection. He said, let's go sidebar. What is contained in the records that have been provided? Calls and text messages that have happened. Is this from the network's perspective? Yes. She did admit that engineers would know more than her, but I think her only job is just to explain the cell towers and the phone numbers that were put in the evidence. This guy works for the homicide unit in Miramar Police Department. And so what I do is I will just stick with the cell phones or cellular phones or devices of that nature. I do the extraction and the analysis for it software and hardware uh, company called Celebrate. Did you do any analysis of the device? I did not. In terms of the extraction of the device, have you provided an iPhone? Yes, that, that, yes. Prior to coming to court today, did you have the opportunity to review the digital copy of that extraction? I did. This is the, the generated report of, uh, oops, sorry, the generated report of, of the cellular device that was uh, extracted. Imagine he breaks it right there. Objection. Yes, sir. They objected it and go sidebar again. They're going to object to anything with the phone records, boys. Over the past year, there was like three or four different hearings held just for the phone records. Like they were really fighting these phone records for a while, but. And you have not analyzed it? No. You don't know if there's any relevant evidence on it at all? That's correct. Who it belongs to, really? I do know who it belongs to. Uh, as far as the contents of it, I don't know. You don't know, you don't know who uses it? I do not. You don't know who it's registered to? I do not. Still putting up the fight that it's not Melly's phone <laughs> and that it's a group phone, maybe? Definitely not a group phone. To account for the number of steps that someone takes. In addition to these cases, I have several articles. There have been lawsuits about the accuracy of the data that is compiled by this type of app assessing reverberation. And every time she goes to church and comes back, she's taking 20,000 steps because she's going like that. Whether or not this information is reliable is yet to be determined. Melly apparently took like 1,300 steps when he got out of the car and walked through the woods and his phone tracked him stepping 1,300 times. This team's trying to show that it could be not accurate. The technology has advanced to the point of being reliable is yet to be determined. But this court cannot admit it until the, first, the state first meets its burden of establishing the reliability of the data. Walks 70 steps. Says who? Says an app. What app? The one in his phone. Is it reliable? We don't know. Why? Because she has not established Melly's lawyer is really good. I believe his name is David Howard. He puts doubt in every little thing. State versus Maximet, which is a 1967 case, which was the earliest time in which I could find a pedometer being mentioned. And at that point, it's important to note this is a well-established technology that's been in use for hundreds of years. The prosecutor came back with other cases and other facts about the pedometer. Wearable devices as admissible evidence. Technology is killing our opportunity to lie. Uh, the 2019, the iPhone health app from a forensic perspective can stats and distances registered during walking and running being used as digital evidence. I May mean, I just ask if the state is making the representation that all the cases she's citing to do not require that she that a witness establish the reliability of the technology it's just put in? It has been admitted and I have some of send everything that I'm giving to is on our copy to you as well. Okay. What a chess game right there, boys. That was a hell of a chess game. Both citing sources and both trying to put forth their argument to the judge. However, the motive seems to be missing. And I think the prosecution really needs to be focusing on that. Um, I, I know you don't necessarily need that to convict, but again, I think it will bode a long way with jurors if they want to be successful in obtaining a conviction here. Once again, I'd like to point out as much as I can, my condolences to the families of the victims that have to go through this. This is like such a shitty situation. Because even though the predicate wasn't made, the objection wasn't made at the time the evidence was sought to be introduced. The state sought to introduce evidence without laying a foundation. Our objection is objective foundation. We're not making a Daubert objection to an expert who's testifying. And the fact that that foundation needs to be presented by somebody with expertise and knowledge doesn't make it a Daubert question. It's a foundation question. That there is a wholesale dump of information coming in through a witness who said, I haven't even looked at it. How do we know that the information in there is relevant? 
How do we know that information that has been introduced is not more prejudicial than probative, even if relevant, on a 403? <coughs> if the prosecutor brought that guy up and he has no idea what the big dump on the phone is, it could be prejudicial to Melly. That phone is used interchangeably so much that when you dial with it, it comes up with one of the decedents named as the identifier. It's in the name of Jamie King, not Jamel Demons. It was retrieved from uh, Jameson Francois. Not Jamel Demons. Three decent points, but I truly believe it's Melly's phone. If there was a bunch of pictures on it of him using it, like on FaceTime with people, people calling him Melly in the text messages and him calling his mom Ma in the text messages, I believe that happened, so. It was being used after the defendant was arrested. We have information here that indicates that. It shows the phone being used to call. It shows the same step data from that very unit after he is incarcerated. It's obvious that it's being used by several other people. Or Melly's manager just had Melly's phone when he just got locked up and was like walking around with it, like figuring shit out, posting on Melly's social media and shit, like using Melly's phone. Not only is it being used by others, the text being carried by others, it's in somebody else's name, retrieved from someone else, and this witness has not analyzed a single letter, all the information that he can put in. And a lot of it is going to be prejudicial. Thank you. The relevancy yeah. issue is relatively low, counsel. Uh, my understanding. Where's the phone located, counsel? Relevancy issue is, is low. Judge is basically saying that it is relevant. The phone was located, it was taken from the defendant's manager on February uh, 2019. The defendant was providing the passcode and information via jail calls to his manager to use it on that. And the phone also authenticates itself. He said there was jail calls of Melly telling his manager the password. <laughs> Every single photo that is on that, whether it be a selfie, a screenshot of a FaceTime conversation, or anything of that, goes back to this defendant. Then they have to establish it before they put it in, not after the fact. The Instagram account is being used days after his arrest, up to and including pictures of this very trial last week. This Instagram account is being used and accessible to a number of people. This team's good, dude. They're really trying to point that other people are on his accounts. Every rapper has like a manager label on their fucking Instagram account. It's, it's a good point, but I'm trying to think of like a jury that doesn't understand rappers like that. Like they, they could be swaying, yeah. Public account that several people have access to. Yeah, I'm sure you're gonna be able to ask those type of questions, guys. I haven't seen it, you haven't made me aware of it. You're just saying it's something more prejudicial than probative. If it is, I'm more than happy to go through one at a time with you and find out. <laughs> but as far as who used the phone, uh, what was it being done? Council saying it's, it's uh, uh, relevant uh, to establish this phone. So I, I've made my ruling, you, you've made your objection. So everybody knows where they stand on it. Your decision whether or not to do that kind of verification? Yes. Okay, and you elected not to? Correct, I elected not to. <laughs> did you have an engineer review any of the data that you retrieved? No. How did you verify that the machine, the set of software that you use, downloaded the contents of the phone in its entirety? How did you go about verifying that? That is not something that I can verify. That is whatever the data that, that comes from that phone and appears on the software. That's what I have. That's what I can do. Okay, so you can't verify. I cannot. Is there another software that you can use to download the information? Sure, there's other software. And you only use the cell, right? Correct. And if you use another software and compare the downloads, that would be one way for you to test it, whether or not the download was complete, right? In theory, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, so you did test it on another software? No, I did not, but this is the only software that I have. The witness is clearly getting a little agitated with these questions, but it's good questions from a defense attorney. He's trying to put doubt in the jury's mind right now about the cell towers and the system cell break that this guy used to get it, so. It's not that you had another software available to you that could help to verify the completeness and accuracy of your results. It's that you can do it, but you didn't have that software available to you. Well, correct, I did not do it now. <laughs> He's so, he's annoyed. Do you know anything about the testing of the technology of Celebrite, its efficiency and operability? No, I don't. I'm not an engineer for that. So you, pardon me? I'm not an engineer for that. Okay. If that Celebrite did not give you a complete and accurate download, you would have no way of knowing it. That's correct. Okay. So you're just trusting in the faith. You're just having faith that the Celebrite, the accuracy and completeness of the Celebrite technology, right? That's correct. Even though you don't know anything about whether or not it works properly. That was a good sentence right there. God, this lawyer, man, he's pretty good. So it is your testimony, sir, that you didn't do an extraction from this phone in June and then another at a later date? I don't know. Oh, at an earlier date in April? I don't know. Any of your reports that would indicate that? I have one that was completed on February 28th. February 28th. Okay. Okay. Nothing for Thank you. Do you know whether or not the right is accurate? Correct. In your training and experience, can you speak on that particular subject? Objection. Uh, this witness has already testified that he can't see Saying. She just tried to ask him if Celebrite is accurate when he already admitted to the defense team that he doesn't know if it's accurate three minutes ago. Added data to a forensic download or down that wasn't on phone itself. I'm sorry, objection. What's your objection? You would have no way of knowing that. You asked it one time, sorry. Have you ever had an instance in which Celebrite has added data to the forensic extraction or data dump that was not on the phone itself? That was not on the phone? Not on the word. 
I'm an FBI agent. So employed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This man, a Fed. I've never had more people call me a Fed in my life in the past like two weeks just because I point out both sides. Like I point out sides from the prosecutor and the defense. So CAS or the Cellular Analysis Survey Team is a group of uh, specially trained and equipped agents and task force officers uh, who do cellular analysis or mobile device location analysis. And so when you say that, what types of records are you working with? Usually records from phone companies or other service providers. So what's the purpose of historical cell site analysis? To help with investigations. Sort of mapping software and plots it, and then we'll give you a general area where the device was at the time. Keyword right there, he said general area. The defense can really pick apart this guy for sure. Is a specific person within a specific area? No. Why not? Because the records I have are just about devices. So there are limitations to your testimony. Yeah, absolutely. You make the so this is an order on the admissibility of expert witness testimony by Federal Bureau Investigation Special Agent Brennan. I think Melly's team is objecting any FBI agent coming up. I think that's what I heard. Agent calling testimony regarding the cellular, cellular analysis survey team. Who pouring up right by the damn microphone, bro? So I believe counsel is trying to say that we are going to object to the admissibility of the counsel report. Anthony Williams' cell phone, as well as Mr. Demons. Jenna, sorry, cell phone. Other reports are out there. The other ones were generated in May of 2022 and immediately turned over to defense counsel. And I have a very different recollection of that. This was listed at the same time. So right now, Melly's team is fighting for this agent's information not to come up. Are they zooming in on the family members? Come on now. Is that Woe Vicky? Why the fuck is Woe Vicky there? Cast report would be used. She didn't give us a definitive answer. We finally rested on the fact that she was not going to be using Mr. Francois's phone. So it is a little bit of a surprise that he's not being introduced at trial. I think she just said she's unaware that uh, Melly's manager's phone and Wither's phones are going to be used. It's the same one. It was all done at the same time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. There was a typo that had to be finished on the spelling of the defendant's name which is why it was generated at a second time. So she just said there was a typo. That's why I was delayed. So he's going to testify. I would normally admit a cast report. Uh, I don't see why it would come in here. I don't see this specifically saying it's admissible. I see it it's saying special agent Collins expert testimony in the area of the cellular phone forensics. So he can testify. He's here. You can ask him questions that you want. Uh, but I don't believe I'd be letting this into evidence. It's just, you know, it's, he's here. His testimony is his testimony. And I don't, it's not clear for me from this order that that's what Judge Siegel anticipated that the report was coming in. So he's basically saying that she fucked up submitting her report, but he's going to let the guy testify. Um, I'm not concerned about the mapping. I'm concerned about the report per se. Ooh. All right, here we go, baby. I'm pausing this shit. So Melly and uh, Sack Chaser's phones go all the way up together all the way down over here and then all the way over here to at 3 57 a.m towards the everglades where they say you know where there's no witnesses and shit went down you know what i'm saying on pembroke road i believe the specific locations but rather the towers that are used i think it's important for the jurors to understand that and have my understanding is that the defense is objecting to that exhibit is that correct yes judge that it's irrelevant i would also object to the fact that, that it's not relevant it's not relevant. It's also referring to Mr. Demon's phone. Nobody's established that number was his. It's referring to Mr. Williams' phone. We've got no testimony that establishes that it's Mr. Williams' phone. Records and phone numbers assigned them to people. We have had no testimony or evidence before the court that those actual phone numbers belong to those individuals. This is the extraction. That's correct. Melly's telling his lawyer or something, but can't read lips, man. Both sides battling to get these phone evidence in there. Melly Booking at gmail.com. You have Melly a Twitter account. You have Melly an Instagram account. You have his Twitter, Instagram account, Windy Melly Booking email on there. Melly Montana, the Snapchat account, which the Snapchat is already in evidence. I'm showing that one. Ooh, the Snapchat's already in evidence and it's logged in on there. A Facebook account as well on that. It's Facebook? All right, if your Facebook is on the phone, is your phone, dude? That's formally by Mr. Demons. Brings up a selfie. It's, it's, it's the circumstantial evidence of that effect, but it, that's not, I'm not putting that in evidence that way. You show the portion that shows the maps and you can talk about the maps and the, the uh, other things, but leave out the portion that has at the bottom or like pretty much the bottom or top that identifies the, Oh, that's actually kind of a W for Melly's team right there. He just said you can't say specifically on the paper that it's Melly's phone in front of the jury. You can just say the phone number, which might confuse the jury. But all right, that's a wrap on day five. Chess match on battling for the phone evidence to be omitted as evidence. Still, they're putting up the fight that it's not Melly's phone with tons of selfies in there. It's kind of funny, but they're doing what any lawyer would do in this situation. It's most likely Melly's phone. I'd say 90% chance i'll keep covering this trial so subscribe follow me on twitter and instagram right now and tiktok love you boys